Michael Langston here at Warchant.com, senior recruiting analyst. Certainly a, a lot going on, as you guys, you guys could see, uh, well over a thousand, uh, over a thousand kids uh, in the portal already in the last uh, day and a half. So certainly, it's been a, a, a certainly busy time. Just want to, you know, want to address a, you know, a few just different topics of of what we can cover. Obviously, I've mentioned uh, I don't think FSU is going to go after a running back. Obviously, they're not going to have the quarterback because they have Jordan Travis returning, but. I don't see that happening. And then receiver, I think if they do add somebody, it'll be uh, from the high school ranks, and that's not a guarantee that they take another one. They might be satisfied with what they have. They have an incredible haul already with with Hakeem Williams, a five-star receiver from Stranahan High School, and, and uh, uh, as well as they have uh, four-star Dre Jacobs uh, out of Vero Beach and, and also Goldie Lawrence out of out of Sanford. So they, they, they feel pretty good about the room. Seems like most of the guys, everything I've heard, you know, they're, they're coming back. I haven't heard anything as far as anybody leaving. Obviously Keyshawn Helton left today, but I think that was kind of, you know, probably expected, but I think overall those positions I think are pretty set. I think that the main position is defensive line. Uh, it seems to be a position that they're heavily coveted. I've, I've talked about Brandon Fiske. That's a guy from Western Michigan. I think there's still a good amount of communication We've we mentioned also Daryl Jackson. I think if he hits the portal and it goes through and everything, I think FSU is looking to be in a in a pretty strong spot. I think Miami's still going to try to go in there and try to convince them not to go. But um, based on the story we heard from Gary Furman from the Miami on three side, it sounds like uh, you know it's expected to happen. So I think FSU will be the likely choice when he does decide. And that'll be a big addition because that's a guy that's productive on that Miami defensive line, certainly one of their, their best defensive line prospects throughout the season. So that's a guy I think FSU could get likely good news is assuming he still follows through and goes through with the, the transfer. And then you also have, um, then you move over to the defensive end. That's kind of a tricky situation because you have, you have Jared verse. Uh, yet we still are waiting to see what he's going to do. Obviously, I would lean towards him leaving just because of what the season he's had, but you never know. But if he doesn't leave, I could see them not taking a defensive end in this class based on what they have returning. You know, you certainly have Patrick Payton. You have a lot of young guys. You have a lot of guys that you're, you feel really good about as far as the program. I, have, uh, that I think a lot details depends on, you know, what Verse does. Now, first goes, I do think you're going to you know, add a solid uh, you know, defensive end in there. And then certainly I think they're going to add a linebacker or two in this class. You have Tatum Bethune, Kalen Deloach. Seems like those guys are coming back. Also DJ Lundy. So I could see them adding one or two in this class. Certainly you have Blake Nicholson coming in from the high school ranks along with DeMarco Ward. So you have some guys that are coming in. But I think you need some experienced guys in there. I think they're they're kind of looking at it. several guys. They're even after a guy in, you know, in the high school ranks that I covered on the board. So you have a lot of that. And then DB, I think they're really focused on safeties. I think uh, they're going to hit either one or two in the portal for safety. So I think you're going to see a lot of activity there. And then uh, lastly, I, I'll go back to the tight end position. I think, you know, Kyle Morlock is a guy we've covered consistently. I've, I, I've even shared some stuff, you know, intel detail about what's going on there. I think FSU sits in a very good spot. The two teams that were the biggest threat were NC State and Tennessee, more so Tennessee. Obviously, uh, their offensive line, our offensive coordinator coach went over to South Florida, took the head coaching job. So now uh, things are certainly looking pretty good as he gets ready for an official visit to FSU this weekend. Could be more official visitors added. That's what I was told today. Uh, I think they're figuring that out and they're going to know that by probably Thursday. So I, I don't be surprised if there's a few more added to, to that official visit line as far as uh, guys visiting uh, another guy that just entered a portal that I, I knew from the very start. Uh, he was very, he was a guy that was high on the FSU's radar is Jaheim Bell. For those that don't know Jaheim, Jaheim was all the way back at uh, played at Valdosta high school uh, out of Valdosta, Georgia. He was a guy they, they loved uh, at that time. FSU was going through a lot of transition. So it, it just wasn't going to work out. He's been one of the biggest playmakers for the, this South Carolina offense. I was actually a little surprised that he entered the portal, but uh, there's a lot of ties uh, to FSU. He's always liked FSU a lot. He's been very high on them. So certainly this could be a, a homecoming type of thing where, you know, Jaheim Bell comes uh, back home to FSU and plays closer to home. I think that's certainly a driving factor into what FSU is doing on the field the way they get their playmakers of all. I think that's very attractive from what I hear from people around 
Jaheem. So I know uh, the it's been heavy communication. If for everything I've got in the last you know four hours, there's been heavy communication with FSU and Bell since he entered the portal. So that's certainly a guy I think they covet. Um, I think they they kind of view him as like a a slash athlete slash tight end that can you know, do a lot of different. You can line him up in a lot of different spots. So I think that's the attraction. But I think they, you know, if people ask me, like, would they take both of them? Yes, I, th- I get the impression they would take both of them and they and their skill set's a little bit different as far as what they do. So I think Bell's a guy to definitely have the re- high radar red alert on just to keep an eye on him. So you know, I think those are some of the things I just got. I want to give you guys kind of a breakdown. Coaching visits are already updated. Uh, there's several on the on the PRB. I think I will have another offensive line breakdown of kind of some targets that I feel you know, that FSU likely goes after. I did confirm with Casey Roduck, who's the uh, offensive lineman at, at Colorado, that he told me he's like, he definitely has interest in FSU. So that's certainly one of the guys that I feel is is heavily involved there. We covered a few more on the boards. Obviously, I think I'll do another mill to cover some more guys of, of to kind of keep an eye on. But uh, this thing's going fast, guys. So uh, it's going to get better. It's going to be bigger. And and like I said, there's a lot of positives, you know, going on with uh, I, I said this before the season started that, hey, this FSU is going to be a top tier uh, destination for a lot of these kids. And you can kind of sense that the way, you know, the interest is, is really picking up for, for from some of the top players uh, at, at a lot of these positions. So I think it's only going to get heavier. Um, I think you could see some commits uh, coming down the pipe, maybe in, in a week frame or so. But we'll see. Uh, there's no timeline for sure. But that's. That's kind of the, the vibe I'm getting off that. So uh, make sure you stay tuned to warchant.com. We'll have a lot more from the transfer portal. Make sure you hit the like button, all that fancy stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.